Good morning. This is what a morning is like when kids don't have any place to go. They hang out in the classroom and then they ask silly questions. What's your question? Which spaghetti, what spaghetti bowl would you have? What spaghetti bowl would I have? They're both the same amount of spaghetti. Yeah, I'm supposed to put your because this one is Yeah, I have three times. All right, so this is my vlog, but I'm actually going to use it for my uh, classroom. And they are going to watch this so they'll learn uh, a little bit about me. And it goes perfectly in line with what we're studying uh, when I was actually living in Africa. So the first picture that you're now seeing, this was me on the border of Zaire and Uganda. Zaire is now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So you guys should already know that from your map. It, it was right there on that border. I was facing back towards Uganda. And please do not make fun of my hair, okay? I'm 18 years old. Uh, there's no place to get a haircut around there. And it, it just, when it grows, it gets pretty big. And I get a little Q-tip head up there. So, you know, it's, it's who I am. I can't hide that fact. <laughs> so don't give me a hard time on that one, all right? If, if you want me to continue showing you things that I've done in my past, then you're gonna have to be a little nice to me. And something else that I want you to be aware of is Africa is not all arid and dry. Now, a lot of part of the Sahara in Northern Africa is, but in the middle of Africa, which was in Uganda, which was right on the equator, there was still a lot of green grass, a lot of hills and farms. Uh, it's beautiful landscaping, the hills, there's also Lake Victoria. If you had an image of Northern Africa, you would be amazed what Uganda looks like. So it was very, very different. It was also really cool. And you can tell it rained a lot there. I took pictures of rain because I wanted people to realize that there was rain in Africa. And I was there during the rainy season. So it almost rained like every single day for about two straight months. It got kind of tiresome after a while. There was so much rain, it caused a mudslide. And I made sure I took a picture of that. Now, before I get to all the safaris and things that I saw on the trip, let me show you some of the personal parts. This is where I had to take a shower. This tub, this black tub, is where you put some warm water that's warmed up over fire, and you put it in there to make a warm water, and then basically you're just cupping the water and putting it on top of your body. And it's just a way of getting a wash down, and that's how I had to clean myself. There was uh, no running water at this place that I was staying at. There's also no running water for the restrooms. So if you've ever been in an outhouse, I had to use that as well. Now when there was a restroom with running water, I made sure I took a picture of it. So I know this is weird, but I just, to me it was a big deal. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get a picture of this, all right? Now that you're seeing this, you have to realize this was 25 years ago. So things could be very different now uh, from when the time I was there. And this was in the rural part of Uganda. A lot of times when Americans go to Africa, they usually go with another group of Americans. They go with a travel agency or a travel group, and they all stay in the travel areas where most tourists go. But when I went, I went with a priest who was from Uganda. He was born and raised there. He took me to see his family that you see right here, and they are some of the nicest people in the whole world. The mom, the dad, the brother, uh, the sister-in-laws, and it was just, this was a, it was a beautiful home with a lot of love, and it was amazing to see that. And, it, and this town right here is called Kamwingi. It is in a very remote part of Uganda, and it's a tiny, tiny town. It was a little unusual because I wasn't used to this. I was going through a lot of culture shocks. So, and so when I would walk through this town, everybody would stare at me because they weren't used to seeing someone with the color of my skin. I wasn't in any tourist tourism area. And so a lot of the kids, especially the kids, had never seen anyone like me. So they would just stare the whole time and just like, give me this weird look. And I would like, are they ever gonna look away? And they wouldn't, they were just in awe. And so uh, it kind of felt like being a celebrity or something. Like if you walk in somewhere and everyone just keeps an eye on you. 
This is the church and the parish that I stayed at. There was a bishop that lived there. This is also the priests were there. So I was able to stay there for a month or so, uh, maybe even two months, in the room that I got to stay in. And so it didn't get a picture of the bed, but you can see um, some of the things that I had. One thing I want to point out is that lantern. Do you see that blue lantern right there? You had to use that because sometimes electricity would go out. It would. Um, you would have to use kerosene lamps and put that on and uh, so that you can see it to get around at night. Also during this time, I don't really have a picture to show this to you, but there were a lot of earthquakes. And so I got to experience what it was like. One was even really powerful that happened like in the middle of the night and it was just a jolting and a, and a that loud sound. It almost sounded like a big 18-wheeler driving by or a train driving by, except it wouldn't stop and the, the building would start shaking, the ground would start shaking, it would kind of look like this a little bit where everything just kind of moved and jolted sometimes, then it go back and then jolt. And it was a it was an interesting experience. I first time I only first that was the first time I ever experienced an earthquake. It was also the last time I've ever experienced an earthquake. When I had to get shopping done, I would go to the local Walmart, I guess we can call it. This is where we got shopping done. Yeah, it looks messy. There were a lot of stores there. So people would have little uh, shops and they would sell food. They would sell little trinkets that they had. Um, I can show you some of the stuff that they sold. Here are some of the things that I've got in Uganda. So you would go and just buy these and you could probably get these for like, maybe even like 10 cents or five cents. Uh, they would call them shillings and we would just buy little things there and I could buy, this is where I bought like little touristy things to bring home. Um, this little doll. Things that were homemade but they would sell them there and I would uh, have things to bring home for, uh, for my family. Now this ball is really special to me. Uh, I know I've spoken in my class about this ball. Um, if you weren't in my class, or obviously if you're watching this vlog now, you may not have heard this story. This ball I got from a little boy. We were, the priest and I, Father Isidore, we were going on a, in a van in a very remote village in the bush. There was hardly any road there. And there was a boy walking all by himself. And so we asked if he needed a ride, which was very common to do there. Uh, so he got, got into the van and, and we started driving back and he was holding on to this ball. And I would, uh, I asked him, what is that? And, uh, and he said it was a, uh, it's like a soccer ball is the word that he used for it. And so he let me see it and I got to take a look at it and I was amazed. And then he said I could have it. That was one thing about Uganda was they were so giving. They always wanted to give things and, and uh, show their appreciation. I didn't want to do this. This was his ball, but he insisted that I take it. And so when I did that, it made me realize that uh, this is now one of my most prized possessions. This does not cost any money. It's grass that they put together uh, over and over, spend it over and over and over to finally make a ball. And it was a lot bigger than this, I'm sure. This is probably like the end of it where it was starting to get a little small. But this is what they would use for a soccer ball. You didn't need money. You put a couple of things for a goal and then kids would have this and be able to play around for a long time. I mean, nowadays kids need Fortnite, or they need other things to keep them busy, or they get bored, or there's nothing on YouTube, or Netflix gets boring. I mean, look, you can get creative, find ways to, to make a living and find toys, find things to uh, play games with. It's, it's very possible to do. Uh, and that's what this kind of symbolizes for me. Uh, it was very generous, and 25 years later, I still have this. All right, so as you drive through Uganda, you are going to run into some traffic every now and then. Not from necessarily cars. Unless you're in Kampala, which is like the capital of Uganda, you won't run into a whole lot of car traffic, at least 25 years ago. But, there would, but you would run into animals. And the animals had the right of way. They're not gonna move out of your way. And so if you have cows, you're just gonna have to wait for them to pass. And the cars would sit there and just wait, but there's nothing much you can do, all right? And then there's one time where we bought bananas. And it was no big deal, you buy bananas every now and then. But this time it was a little different because about a half mile to a mile later, all of these monkeys started surrounding the cars. It's almost like they knew that you just had bananas and they basically are hijacking your car, like, hey, give us some of those bananas. And so you feel kind of obligated. We stopped, we gave some bananas. Um, I don't, I have a picture, but this one I don't think shows it, but some of those monkeys had babies underneath. Uh, holding on to them underneath so you could actually see two monkeys at once. Uh, they were 
kind of mean. They wanted that banana, and they expected you to give it to them, and then they would, uh, then they'd leave you alone, and then you just kind of had to work your way through that traffic to get out of there. Here is the equator, and so one thing I love telling my students about that I can run the first of the year. I love to tell, let my students know that on the southern side of the hemisphere, on the south side of the hemisphere, it is a different season than the northern side of the hemisphere. So in this picture right here, half of me is in wintertime and the other half is in summertime. Uh, technically speaking, actually, this might have been fall and spring because I was there like in October and November when I took this picture. So it's just funny because that one border, the equator, switches you whether you're going to be in the fall or the spring right there. Finally, we made it to the safari place and we took a boat and I got to see some of the things. I think I actually saw hippos there. Uh, one time there was a hippo that crossed right in front of our car and we had to look at it at night. It was late at night and it just walked right past our car. Uh, and those things, if you did not know, the hippos are the most dangerous animal in the world. They kill more humans than any other animal in the world. And so I learned that 25 years ago. Uh, also, I'm living in a town called Hutto. We have hippos everywhere. And we are the only mascot in the United States that has a mascot of hippos, which is crazy because they are such a dangerous animal, but no other teams take that name. Another thing I want you to keep an eye on is how they are dressed. Look at the women. Look at that clothing. The dresses they wear, they wear for special occasions or you know, when they go to church or if they're on a safari or something like that where a lot of other people will be. But honestly, now I think about it, I see them wearing this quite a bit, like almost all the time. This is just their wardrobe. This is how they dress in that country, uh, very beautifully. They do a really good job of that. Okay, and finally, we're going to end it on probably the worst picture I took in the entire time I was there. All right, you can probably barely see it, but you can see the silhouette of the ears of an elephant. Now what happened is we saw this elephant as we were coming to the safari and, and we were able to take a look at it, but it noticed us and then it started to face us and then start to shake its ears. And once it does that and it starts showing so signs of aggression, you have to get out of there. Elephants are known for toppling vehicles over. They could injure people. They really do not like to, uh, to put on a show for people. So these elephants out in the wild, this one was ready for us to get out of there. So we started giving those signs. I wanted to get a picture real quick. I took it out. I probably should have turned the flash off, but I didn't have time. Took that picture and the flash messed up because it got all over the car and you could barely see the elephant. It was pretty close. So you can take a look at where it's at. Uh, and I got, you know, I kind of missed it. Okay, so that's it. Um, that was my trip to Africa, to Uganda. And I went during September of 1994, and I came back in December of 1994. And it's a time I'll, I'll never forget. It's impacted me that even today, I think about it all the time. It was a great trip. And if I had a chance to do it again, I would definitely go again. All right, that's the end of this vlog. So uh, join me. Oh, subscribers, I said I was gonna tell you. Right now, it's Tuesday. It is uh, April 17th and we have 20 subscribers. So we are moving kind of slow, we're getting there. It's probably about 10 subscribers a week. Uh, hopefully it starts growing a little bit faster. But either way, we're still making a vlog every day. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.